Hey troops, welcome back to our double bass drumming 101 lesson series, helping you develop the strongest, tightest, most confident double bass technique you've ever had. That's all we're doing. So today we are gonna continue with 16th notes. We're gonna stay in that note rate, and we're gonna focus on this thing called the gallop. What is the gallop, you may ask? Well, it's just playing two 16th notes in a row, playing right foot, left foot. So this is really more of a, a workout lesson of anything. It's, it's an overview, but we're gonna go through a lot of different variations here. It's something you can definitely play along with me as you're watching this. Just make sure to download the free PDF, hit the link down at the bottom, so you can make sure you, you can see what's going on, you can hear what's going on, and you can play along with us. That's the whole point of this. So just hit the link at the bottom, you'll be good to go. Now, because we're only playing two notes on the bass drum, we really want to make sure that we're playing and subdividing those two notes as straight 16th notes and not swung 16th note triplets. We really need to be hypersensitive to this so that our playing just sounds consistent and confident and intentional. So to give you an example of what I mean by this, let's take the first exercise, which is just the first two 16th notes, 1E, 2E, 3E, 4E, and pretty basic, but I want you to listen how they can be played as either straight 16th notes or like I said, swung 16th note triplets. So I'm gonna demonstrate it both ways and really try to listen to hear the difference here. All right, I hope you could hear the difference between those two because it's it's very important. I want you to be so aware and familiar with this that you can recognize it, especially in your own playing. It happens to all of us. Sometimes we might get a little bit lazy, maybe a little distracted, and unintentionally play a note value that, that we're not really intending. And this is a perfect situation for that. We, we may not be really focusing on evenly subdividing those 16th notes and get a little lazy and what happens they turn into a different note value we don't want that that is not the goal that's not the purpose that's not how we're going to sound consistent and confident and professional we want to make sure all of our playing sounds intentional and the only way we do that is that we got to be consistent with it which means we got to be aware of it when we practice it so i want it to be like fingers going down a chalkboard when you hear something that isn't quite right. It should be uber, uber clear to you. So that's the goal. Keep an ear out for that. Be hypersensitive to it. Now that we're a bit more clear on the quality of what we're trying to play here, let's go through all of these two note, 16th note variations. There's gonna be four of them and we're gonna play them in a couple different ways. First, we're gonna play them slow and then we're gonna play them fast or a little bit faster. As we play them slow, we're going to play eighth notes on the hi-hat for our ride, two and four on the snare, as is. That's how it's written on the PDF. But when we play it at the faster tempo, the faster rate, we're going to remove that eighth note, and we're just going to play quarter notes. We're going to play quarter notes, feet, hands, everything is going to stay the same. We just kind of want to get away from that dependency on feeling an eighth note grid help us subdivide the time a little bit more. We gotta free ourselves up of that. And playing at a faster tempo, that even makes it a little bit more practical too. So let's check it out. This is 1A. All right, now to help us develop our ear so we can apply these gallop rhythms to different time feels, we can play this exact same thing, but as a halftime feel, meaning we're just gonna play snare on beat three. That's it. Ride stays the same, and so do the bass drums. And once again, we're gonna play them at the two different tempos. One, Let's check it out. Two.
All right, now let's go on to the next two note variation, which is gonna be the andas. These are the last two 16th notes within a beat. One E anda, two E anda, three E anda, four E anda. We're gonna do the same thing, play it as a two and a four feel and also as a half time feel. So let's One, check it out. Two. All right, now variation three, we're trucking along. This one is a little bit different. Now we're gonna start on the upbeat 16th note. We're gonna play the E and the and. That's the two note variation. So we got one E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. Those are the two 16th notes in the middle of the beat. Still, we're playing right, left, right? We're not gonna play left, right, sometimes double bass methods like to assign feet to beats we're not doing that here we are going to we're going to maintain our right left footing throughout all of this same thing both feels a couple different tempos let's check it out All right, our final two beat 16th note variation, we're gonna play the first and the last note of the 16th notes within a beat. So it's gonna be one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Once again, we're gonna be leading this two note phrase as right foot, left foot. But since it starts on, since this exercise starts on one, you're gonna start with the left, but it's really the second note of the two note phrase. You know this, I'm probably over explaining this. Let's do it. You know what to do. Here we go. All right, now to wrap this up, we're gonna we're gonna play a, a fun little rhythm that incorporates all of these variations, and it uses this three note grouping concept. And we're not gonna go too deep into that in this lesson. We definitely will in the future. Just for now, just follow along in the PDF, and you'll be totally fine with it. But just know that it's a really really cool rhythmic concept, and if you could get comfortable with it now, you're gonna be good to go in the future. So let's check it out.
All right, I hope that was fun. Now we're gonna play it as the halftime version. And this version I feel really exposes the, the polyrhythmic nature of what this rhythm is or what it's built from. And it's, it's really fun, but as long as you're counting, you're following along on the chart, you're not gonna get lost and it'll just really help you outline these rhythms a lot better and play with conviction, play with understanding because you're counting it, you're not guessing. That's also the secret too. One of my favorite phrases, axioms is, when you're learning something new, if you're not counting, you're guessing. And there's a second part. If you're guessing, you're sucking, right? We don't wanna be guessing, we wanna play with confidence and the best way to play with confidence and not guess is to count. So this is a great exercise in counting as well. All right, so let's check it out. This is a halftime version. Let's have some fun. All right, now the most important thing to do whenever we're learning anything new is to begin to combine it with something you can already play. This is essential into developing your vocabulary and really starting to connect these newer ideas with some more familiar ideas. And like I said, that's how you build instinct. That's how you build your drumming DNA. You have to take the step of combining it with ideas you can already play, right? So. Here's a couple examples of just showing we're going to play a basic groove and then get into this three note grouping, 16th note, two note phrase idea that we're just working on. So I just want to give you something to chew on for a bit and to show you how you can apply it in your own playing. So let's check it out. Thank you for watching this. Hopefully it was valuable to you. If it was, can you please share, like, subscribe? You know all the good stuff that helps us out a ton so we can give you more of this hopefully valuable information. Always remember that the focus is on quality, not quantity. We're building the strongest foundation possible because the stronger that foundation is, the easier and more fun everything else becomes. And You'll just become an unstoppable drumming beast. And who doesn't want to do that? And speaking of beast, if you want to become a double bass drumming beast and really learn how double bass is the most effective technique that will improve all essential areas of your drumming, hit the link below to watch the free masterclass. You'll never look at double bass drumming the same again. I guarantee it. All right. So check it out. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching this lesson once again. Until the next one, stay focused and practice with purpose. We'll see you soon.